Hello everybody, this is Silas for Dino PC, and today we're looking at Cooler Master's new Master Box 5. Okay, so to kick things off, this case is gonna RRP out on the market here in the UK at about 60 pounds or so. Um, there are gonna be a couple of different variations that Cooler Master are producing. We've got some variants in black. This one here is the quite sexy white kind of styling. Uh, it's gonna come with a window side panel, and then you've also got like a plastic semi-transparent kind of smoke plastic panel at the front as well. Uh, ideally to show off some of those LED fans that you might have installed at the front. So £60 is quite an interesting price point for this case. There are going to be some quite heavy competitors uh, to it. Basically, you're looking at something like the S340 from NZXT or maybe like a Zalman Z11 Neo. So we're kind of trying to compare that um, those cases to this one to see where Cooler Master have made improvements or maybe they've got little drawbacks and um, what bits and pieces essentially this case is going to come with. So some key specs on this case. We're going to kick off with dimensions uh, in length, width and height. So we've got 500mm by 220mm by 475 This case is going to be classed as like a mid-tower case. It does, however, support all motherboards. Essentially, you've got MITX, MATX, uh, full ATX and then EATX. All of those motherboards will fit in this kind of a little bit smaller case basically. In terms of cooler support, you do have some different radiator mounting options if you're going with an AIO liquid cooler, uh, but for your typical air cooler, you're looking at about 167 millimeters or about 17 centimeters or so of height uh, is supported with this case. And then for graphics cards, not that you will be needing all of this space, but it does actually support graphics cards up to about 16 inches or 410 millimeters. I challenge you to find a graphics card which is actually that length. I don't believe that there is one that exists on the market today. At 410 millimeters it will support SLI card against card lengthways. For fan support we start with a 120mm at the back of the case uh, just for exhaust. We've also got two 120mm fan slots at the front of the case or 140mm fan slots and it does support a 240mm rad or a 280mm rad with those AIO liquid coolers. So lots of people in the office have had a look at this. They all really like the styling and the design. It kind of follows on from a lot of Cooler Masters other more recent case releases so like their Maker Series cases uh, in that it's got this kind of sloping front panel which um, a lot of people think is really cool. The major difference is however with this case which will kind of set apart from other cases on the market uh, is going to be in its interior design. Essentially what Cooler Master have gone for is a much more modular approach in uh, where you can put kind of hard drive cages um, or where you mount SSDs. So in terms of further interior support, we've already said that of course it fits anywhere from an MITX to an EATX motherboard which is awesome in such a small form factor case. In terms of hard drives, you have options for two three and a half inch hard drives, and then the SSD bracket actually holds two SSDs. So you are a little bit limited in terms of storage versus say like the Zalman Z11 Neo. Uh, it's gonna be a lot closer in terms of what storage options are available to something like an S340 from, as I say, NZXT. In terms of I.O. with this case, you're going to get pretty much what most other cases on the market are going to have. So you've got support for two USB 3.0 options, your standard headphone and microphone jack, power switch and a little kind of recessed, very, very small reset switch. So you're not going to be hitting that by accident, which is quite cool. The only other thing that we've initially assessed as being a little bit lacking with this case is going to be its filtration on the intakes. So because you've got those 120mm and 140mm sort of fan mounts at the front, that's probably where you're going to be getting most of your airflow coming into the case. Unfortunately, it's not a filtered intake. There are, the plastic paneling at the front does have some small kind of grooves in the side of it, which allow good airflow into the case, but you're not going to get a filter. So potentially dust is going to come into the case via the front. Again, it's the same case scenario for the back fan. You don't have a filtered uh, intake there. It's going to be primarily used for exhaust, I'd imagine, for most people though, so it's not so much of a problem. The only other filtered intake that we have is actually going to be on the power supply. So we've got a little plastic intake there, which is actually pretty easily removable and replaceable, which is a nice feature. So overall, with this kind of brief overview, it's a good looking case, very well price pointed at sort of about £60 or so. There are some cool features and some bits that are a little bit lacking, but that's going to be very similar to most other cases that you'll come across. There are always going to be pros and cons. The main claim that Cooler Master are making with this case is that, again, alongside the rest of their case line, you can make it yours. The idea being that you can swap in and out different like hard drive caddies and you've got a power supply shroud, which is also removable. The idea, again, sort of being that you can make the case yours by adding and subtracting or moving around these different components and making an orientation that makes the most sense to you. So there's only really one way that we can actually test whether or not this claim is correct. If there are people that in the market say today for computer cases are going to find these features something that they are going to be using. Uh, the only real way that we can test this ourselves is of course to build a computer in it. So let's start with that and see if there's anything else that we can pick up on with this case and anything more we can report on. So we're going to start the time lap. Punch it, Chewie!
Right, so time back sober. Um, the build itself went very, very smooth. This is a surprisingly easy case to build in. There's tons and tons of cable management space. You can see, even just at the back, that there wasn't really any need for any cable ties. I think I used one. Um, yeah, just, just the one, which is pretty cool. I'm usually one of those people who will spend like 10 pounds on cable ties to go into the computer, make sure everything is like tied down super, super tight and super, super neat. With this one though, you'll chuck the side panel back on and you won't even notice it. Yeah, about an inch of room, actually. Uh, the 24 pin runs super easy. Uh, so let's start our little sort of debrief, our little review round at the back. Uh, minor gripes here, the uh, cable length for the fan. I don't really know what's going on here. I couldn't find a single point on the motherboard to plug it in really. That being said, they do include a little sort of Molex adapter. So if you do run into that problem, you can plug it in somewhere. Obviously for this, we've just speed built a computer to see what it was like building a computer in it. This isn't actually gonna be sort of functional. We're gonna be taking it apart right directly afterwards. So I didn't really worry about that too much, but your mileage may vary. Yeah, so loads of cable management room here at the back. They've also put lots and lots of, they're not grommeted, like rubber grommeted, but you've got loads and loads of pop throughs for cables and stuff, making it very, very easy to actually run cables to where you want to run cables to. Uh, even at the bottom of the motherboard, you see you've got these little tiny holes which makes setting up your I.O. a breeze. Uh, really easy and super, super clean. And I think the results speak for themselves, to be honest. On the inside of the case, you don't have thousands of different mounting options for everything like fans that you will do in a larger case, but that's a sacrifice you're gonna have to make for this form factor. Uh, I really like the power supply shroud and its implementation. Uh, almost taking kind of like a key from the Corsair, the 400C, with its plastic removable power supply shroud. They didn't bother with the little addition to cover it the whole way. They've sort of stopped it off just here, but that's still easily enough space to bunch up all your cables and just tuck them underneath, which is really cool. I really like that. Super easy to remove as well. Everything's pretty much held in place with thumb screws, which is kind of convenient. So you can sort of take this case down to its bare bones relatively speedily without the use of any tools, which I also really, really liked. I thought that was really smart. Yeah, went really interesting with this cooler. I didn't really want to bother taking the fan off at the back. I figured just leave it there and see what other mounting options were available. So as long as you've got like, uh, a cooler with long enough tubing, which pretty much, I mean, Corsair don't really tend to have the longest. NZXT will usually do slightly longer tubing on their coolers. You should be fine, really. I mean, we were still able to mount the radiator right at the front. Uh, I couldn't imagine you'd be able to put it any lower just because the, the tubing itself is gonna kind of come into play. But still, to have it at the front of the case for the intake, it's gonna get fresh air from the outside. So this is kind of a potentially good sort of solution. This is a good place to mount it. And um, yeah, it stretches okay. No stress on the tubing or anything like that. And it was quite easy to install as well. Okay, so moving on to the front of the case, the uh, plastic paneling here pops off super, super easily. We did try and see if you could fit uh, an optical drive at the front and just kind of nest it behind that plastic paneling. Potentially like what Fantex do with their, I think their Evolve Etho, something along those lines, they actually have uh, optical drive mounts at the back of the case. The idea being that if you desperately need an optical drive, you can still install one and use it very occasionally. It's still attached to the case, basically. Uh, unlike a USB one, which you might lose, I guess that that might have been an option here, but the mounting, unfortunately, is not versatile enough to allow us to slide this, the CD drive back to the point where we can install it, so we didn't bother with that. Uh, no filter, as mentioned before, which is a little bit disappointing, uh, but this smoked acrylic, acrylic window is very cool, nonetheless, very easy to remove, so we like that as well, plus points. As with most cases on the market, you're gonna get your sort of toolless hard drive caddies, which are actually quite cool looking. I quite like the sort of uh, catch release mechanism at the front, makes them very easy to kind of install and just, ooh. Yeah, sort of slide in like that, which is quite cool. The most important thing about this case though is its modularity. What, as I've said before, Cooler Master are trying to promote is this idea of make it yours. They've actually come up with a very ingenious solution for allowing you to do that with the hard drive cages. So all you have are little grooves and then little tabs and they've just got thumb screws which hold them in from the back. There are a bunch of different places you can mount them. So you have the option say, of mounting the hard drive cage right at the front. If you don't need it right at the front, you can shift it back. And there are tons of little tabs that allow you to very, very incrementally move it. You can put it at the top if you want to. You can even maybe hide it under here uh, without the tubing. I'd imagine that would fit without a problem. So this is really cool. I think this could be uh, quite a good solution for moving hard drives around. And if it was universally adopted by lots of different brands, say for instance, then parts would be interchangeable, which would be quite an interesting thing to see. Uh, with this one though, I do like that you have so much flexibility as to where you can actually install stuff. I think that's awesome. I haven't seen that before to this varying degree. Normally you have the option of like having the hard drive cages here or here or maybe one on top of the other. Like Corsair have generally implemented it quite well. 
I think this is even better. I actually personally prefer this and having this sort of grid system that also allows good cable management is also a big plus point. So they've managed to develop a system which works well for the modularity, but the benefit is also that you have lots of pass through for cables. So um, sort of killing two birds with one stone basically. Again, with cable management, a little bit has been built into the power supply shroud as well. You do have like this S340 NZXT style sort of pass through here on the power supply shroud for your uh, graphics card cables and stuff like that. If you want to just kind of run it through there, then that's nice and easy and you don't have to go around the back. That being said, you have so much space at the back, you could probably cross cables and you'd never really notice. It's not going to be very hard to, you know, bulge the side panel or anything like that. That was a terrible sentence, sorry. <laughs> to bulge the side panel. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave that in. No. <laughs> to, to bulge, <laughs> like the side panel with all its bulge. Okay, so that's kind of it really. We built a computer in it. I really like it. I think it's super easy to build it. I love the flexible modularity of the kind of mounting system. I think the caddies are really cool. I think the SSD mount's awesome. Um, yeah, there's not really that much negative to say about the case itself. I think the build quality the is button. surprisingly good. The power, the power button. The power button. The power button. Oh, okay. Dave doesn't really like the power button. I guess that's the first Put interaction. That's the first. Oh god, it does. It is like really clicky, and that's the first thing that you do when you touch your computer, and you do that every day. So I can imagine that might get irritating. But my advice would be just like have your computer set to hibernate mode pretty frequently, and then you don't have to worry about this. You just press it once and just use your mouse to I'm really picky. come out back out of sleep. It is picky, but yeah, I mean it's a review. I, I think yeah, if you've got a power button that doesn't really feel like the rest of the quality of the case and the case does feel super premium then it's worth mentioning that that's the one element that kind of does let it down maybe a little bit uh, just because you interact with it the, the only other thing to note is this kind of quite interesting PCIe slot cover which is kind of like Swiss cheese it's got loads of holes in it uh, this is actually designed to stop anybody from pulling uh, the peripherals off your computer so say if you take this computer to a LAN and you have your cables attached you can run like your mouse and keyboard cables through here and your headphone cables and have them come in and go out so people can't take your peripherals and stuff. I'd, it's a little sort of added feature, which is quite nice. I wouldn't imagine many people using it for that. For me, I would have thought it's a little bit better for say, if you've got uh, internal uh, USB 3 or USB 2 and it's all full and you used to have to run the cable out the back, at least now you can do that through a PCIe slot cover rather than just kind of through a hole, you know, popping the water cooling holes out or something like that that looks ugly. There is actually a dedicated space to pass cables through. So yeah, it's just a little added benefit. Uh, nothing to sort of shout home about, but a nice little touch, which I thought was cool. So great case, really cool design, cool functionality. I really liked it. I hope you liked it as well. Guys, put your comments down below. Tell us what you think of this case. Is this something that you might be interested in? Do you like the idea of modular components inside your PC or do you really bother with that at all? Is it the sort of thing that you just scrap entirely or would you actually make use of it? Would you like to see Cooler Master produce more of these accessories? All of this information and more, chuck it in the comments. We always go through it, we pour through it, read it all, and it will go on to Adrian at Cooler Master as well. So maybe they'll make some changes based on your comment. So like and subscribe. Do you like our new studio? Like the video if you like the studio space. We spent a lot of time on it. We're actually really proud of it. Like proud parents, which is cool. But yeah, like the video, always comment, make sure you subscribe, check out future videos as well. We've got a lot more interesting stuff coming up. Uh, make sure on this video, you smash that like button. I'm trying to beat Dave in terms of the light game. So uh, if you enjoyed this, then please let us know and maybe there'll be more of it in the future from myself. But uh, this is gonna be it for me. So thank you very much for checking it out. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Sorted. <laughs> Scotty, give her all she's got. <laughs> Scott, I'm saying Scotty, but like in a Scottish accent. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's like Captain Kirk. I'm giving her all she's got, Scotty. Captain. Scotty, give. <laughs> it's like Scotty, give her all she's got. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Miss, Mr. Sulu, warp speed. Uh, That's terrible. No. So 60 pounds is that was done. Sir. So, uh, with the dimensions, we've got the length, width, and height, uh, and that's going to be five. Length, width, and height. It's like uh, the paper, right? length. I did. <laughs> I cheated.